was busy thinking about. I've been studying biology for almost a decade now, and to this day, sometimes the puzzle pieces just click together in a totally new way, and I see things in a totally new light, and yesterday, I was watching a Cody Ko video from like a year ago, where he made like, I think, cinnamon rolls or something? I don't know, I wasn't paying attention, because all I could think about was the fact that he mixed flour, which is just carbohydrates, so sugar chains, milk, which is lactose, more sugar, and table sugar, so, you know, more sugar, all together to make a goo, and then pour yeast into it. Yeast is a fungus, so it just eats the sugar and produces carbon dioxide, which is what makes the bread rise. So he made sugar goo, poured fungus into it, and let the fungus digest the sugar for him the way he wanted, and then he got it hot enough to kill the fungus, but not hot enough to burn the delicious goo, and that's bread. That's what bread is. And if you want to know more about fungi and how they work, tell TikTok to bring back Fascinated by Fungi, because they banned them for no freaking reason. Animals don't get enough credit. Over the last year alone, we've shown that pigs can learn to play joystick video games, and when they reach hard levels, they're more motivated by people cheering them on than food. We've also learned that crows exhibit something called sensory consciousness, which is even higher than primary consciousness. It basically means they can sit in a tree and think about yesterday and think about tomorrow and just think about life. And now just this month, there's been another report published on a behavior that had never before been seen a wild boar attempting rescue behavior. To be rescue behavior, there are four different criteria that must be reached. One, the victim must be in distress. Two, the behavior of the rescuer is suited to the circumstances of the victim's distress. Three, the rescuer places itself at risk by engaging in rescue behavior. And number four, the act of rescuing is not inherently rewarding or beneficial to the rescuer. This rescue mission centers around a cage like this. It's a trap where the wild animal goes in, triggers the trap, and the two wooden poles swing down, effectively locking it in this cage. Unfortunately, this rescue mission wasn't caught on video. It was caught through a series of pictures taken at two minute intervals, so they've set up this timeline. This starts with these two juvenile pigs. They're trapped in the cage, one is closer to a piglet in size, the other one is a little bit older, maybe like a teenager pig. You can tell they're distressed, they're up against the cage, and they're in here for two hours. But then something really interesting happens. A group of eight larger pigs, including one adult female, come across this cage and they take a lot of interest in the pole. They're really staring it down, touching it, feeling it. The adult female is now showing what we call piloerection, or you probably call goosebumps, but that's when their hair is standing up, and it's showing that she's under distressed. Now we have a few minutes where she is charging against that wooden pole. After around six minutes, the group is now spotted over on the opposite side working on that pole, and you'll notice that this pole is no longer in its effective position. And finally, we end with this scene, a completely empty cage, meaning this group of eight came, found these two juveniles that were in distress, and they were able to free them, and then they left, just like that. This is the first time this kind of rescue behavior has been observed in pigs, but the researchers said they aren't all that surprised, and we do see this a lot with the cetaceans, which do share a common ancestor with the pigs and those other artiodactyls. And cetaceans is just like the scientific term for what we usually call whales. So I don't know, this kind of research fascinates me. We don't understand our own consciousness, so I know we can't really understand another animals, but it just really makes me wonder, and I hope we keep learning stuff like this. Try check, I think we got one. <laughs> yeah. It's fresh, uh, let me see wow. Jordan, do you hit your kids? No. Jordan, do you yell at your kids? No, I don't. But I do say hey. What do you mean you say hey? Oh, I go like this. Hey! Do you hear how quiet I got? 
Muy bien, ahora lo que vamos a hacer es pasar esta bolsa para acá dentro de un colador o algo para, con mucho cuidado para que no se vaya a salir ningún hueso por fuera. Trataremos de sacar primero el caparazón, que como pueden ver aquí lo tenemos, evitando que los huesos salgan fuera para tener la parte más grande. Ya. Ya. Ok, vamos a tratar con mucho cuidado de retirar los huesos que tenga por dentro, que caigan dentro del colador junto al resto de los huesos, para que no los vayamos a perder y poder sacar solo el caparazón. Podemos observar que cuando le sacamos todos los esqueletos estaba a punto de ser mamá justo cuando se murió. Tenía un montón de huevos que iban a nacer. Ahora lo que vamos a hacer es, ya habiendo sacado el caparazón, vamos a pasar toda la tierra con huesos dentro únicamente sin la bolsa ya al colador. Esto es únicamente con la intención de sacar toda la tierra y poder sacar los huesos que vamos a utilizar. One of you will betray me tonight. Is it me, Jesus? No. Is it me, Jesus? It's not you either. Is it me, Jesus? Is it me, Jesus?